This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Bubbles Brown, in case you're not familiar, is a uh, comedian, right, Larry? Yeah, yeah, apparently, yes. Yeah, and uh, he does that for a living, which has not been making him a living in the last year. (laughs) What have you been doing for money? I guess you have Social Security, right? No, I uh, I got unemployment while the whole thing was on. That just ended last month, so... uh, How how long did you get the unemployment for? Over a year, like a year and a half. Really? They, because here in New York, they didn't extend it that much, you know. But so you, you how much? How much did you get in uh, in unemployment? I was getting a couple of grand a month. So. Couple of grand a month? Yeah. Really? Because when I got unemployment, when I was uh, out of work, which I am all the time now, but when I got fired from. Sirius XM, I decided, what the hell, I've never collected unemployment in my life, I'll go collect it. And it came to 1600 a month, you know, 400 Yeah, well, they, they, the pandemic thing, the feds put an extra, I was getting virtually, it was 167 a week from the state and 300 from the uh, feds. Oh, I see, okay. All right. So, yeah. So yeah, the what, the state money would have been peanuts. So. Yeah, but here's my question: How long were you getting the unemployment for? Because when I got unemployment, they only let me have it for 16 weeks. Right, but they extended that because of the of, pandemic. Of the pandemic. Okay. Yeah, it was over a year. I so said normally unemployment. Uh, I think in normal times you get unemployment. The maximum is six months. Yeah. So you were on the public dole. Yes, I'm a welfare <laughs> recipient. You're a welfare I, case. I rather would have been working, but... Yeah, well, you know, uh, we just applied for what was ha- some kind of hardship thing because we're going through this whole thing with the apartment and, the, you know, the legal thing and all of that. And my lawyer said, well, you know, you could apply for hardship and then they can't evict you until January. I said, I don't expect to get evicted, but they said, he said, we can like extend it to January. And I said, why would I come under hardship? And he said, you had cancer, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. You're over 65, right? Yeah. Okay. Hardship case. So I just signed a whole bunch of papers today on that, you know. Your uh, your apartment battle should be uh, they should do a documentary about that. It's like the longest case in American jurisprudence. Well, if if it were a if it were a series on TV, we'd be in our ninth season now. <laughs> yes. You yeah. know, and and it, it's just it's ridiculous. I mean, this thing just gone on and on and on and on. And then we had COVID, and that stood it off for another year and a half, almost two years. I mean, come on. You know, I, it, this should have been settled, what, two years in at best, at worst, rather. And instead, it's just, you know, uh, certain people in this uh, problem futzing around, trying to play out the clock, figuring they'll drive us broke. And they're right. You know, I mean, we've spent over a hundred thousand dollars in legal fees so far. Jesus, yeah, what God, what I couldn't do with that. How many hookers is that, by the way? You know? <laughs> that'd be a, that'd be, a, but that'd be a hundred really good ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, how long do hookers work? In other words, if you hire a hooker, how long have you got her for? Oh, I. 
I never had. I think these guys get them all night. They get the real expensive ones. But in your act, you always act like you go to hookers, and you really don't, right? Nah, not since I was younger. <laughs> no, not since you were younger. Well, I would. No, know. I had. I uh, first time I had sex was with the at the Mustang Ranch in Nevada, and that was. Uh, it was like it was like fifteen minutes, I think. It, 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 they knew how to get you off fast, right? Well, you're young. It didn't take much. Also, time is money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, uh, um, uh, you know, I mean, in, in my case, it would take them forever. Because uh, <laughs> you you would be a bad client. Well, I'm 81 to begin with, and secondly, I had that uh, that little operation, you know, the the, the uh, prostate radiation and the seeds and everything. And forget it, you know. I mean, I don't even have any sex drive anymore, which is which bothers me because I used to love having a sex drive. It was my hobby. Yeah, mine's dead too, but it does it does keep you out of trouble. Well, I, I did say that what it brought back was my dignity. Yeah. Yeah, because guys get completely undignified in pursuit of trying to get laid. The most powerful men in the world have been brought down by their sex drive. <laughs> exactly. But here's the thing. You know, I, it's starting to bother me a little bit. You know, guys are being assailed because they have a sex drive. You know, I mean, I got to tell you, I, I when I was younger, how many minutes could you go in a day without thinking about getting laid? Oh, I think they do studies. It's like, I don't think it's more than two minutes you don't think about sex. Right. There is the sex drive, it's, and it's an animal urge, really. It's, it's uh, you know. It's it the, is, yeah. And it's really ugly, yeah. and it, uh, I know men are pigs, but, I mean. And it's different for men. That, that's how we're wired. It's so. different for men than it is for women. Women are not yeah. always looking to get laid. No. Guys are. I mean, even if they don't want to, there's some urge pulling them in that direction. Now, mind you, I think everybody, every guy, no matter how horny he is, should be a gentleman. All right? I'm sure you always were, you know? Uh, yeah. I know that I always was. But still, we're going to pursue it. Well, now pursuing it is even wrong, you know? You just got to yeah. sit back and wait for an engraved invitation from a woman saying, okay, my vagina is open to you. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's not the way nature dictates it. Nature has a completely set of proto a different set of protocols. And I think that, uh, that, that while, you know, they always say, oh, guys are dogs. Well, no, they're not dogs. They are just simply a prisoner of their, um, their, um, what do you call their sex drive? Yeah. And and we should be pitied for that. We should be understood for that. You know, and yeah, it is wrong for somebody to rape somebody. You know, Bill. I can't defend Bill Cosby. Although, did you see where Bill Cosby is trying to defend what's his name? That uh, uh, the guy who just got. Sentence is going to be sentenced probably to life. Um, R. Kelly. He defended R. Kelly. Uh, I did really. I didn't see that. <laughs> That's a good way to build your image back. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, I mean, I would think that what Bill Cosby would be trying to do is lay low and seem like a good guy. But instead, yeah. he comes out saying R. Kelly was railroaded. <laughs> What, R. Kelly didn't use enough drugs? Is that what it's all about? You know? Uh, so anyway, so that, that's the latest from, from Bill Cosby. God. So sad. The, uh, the, that show was so huge, and he was so beloved. And uh... He was made one of the most beloved people in America. I mean, Jello yeah. doesn't ask you to be a spokesperson unless, you know... You're, uh, you're, yeah, you're, uh, uh, you're thought of as being America's be most beloved dad, as it were. 
And this, I guess, this has been going on for years, right? Well, uh, we always heard about this. You know, I don't know about you, but I always heard about it, about Cosby. I heard somebody tell me in the 80s that, uh, oh, I heard he does weird things with women, and I didn't know anything about it. But yeah. You know what I didn't understand, what I've never understood, uh, is um, uh, women who would go up to Harvey Weinstein's room. Okay? Because the word was out on wine saying, listen, I'm not in Hollywood. I'm not, I don't hang out with Hollywood people. I knew what he was doing. Yeah, everybody knew that, right? <laughs> it, it was, it, they did jokes about it on the Academy Awards. Yeah. Okay? Everybody knew what he was up to. And um, it was just, it wasn't even a secret in Hollywood. And then all of a sudden, what he's doing is horrible. Well, since we knew it all along, aren't we somewhat guilty for not blowing the whistle on him? Yeah. You know, you you heard about it, right? Yeah, I'd heard about it for and years, I heard a long about ago, it. yeah. Years before he ever got busted for it, you know? So, I mean, uh, uh, I so if that's the case, any woman who would go up to Weinstein's room at the hotel, hey, meet me in my room, had to have known or been told by people that they said they were going to see Weinstein, don't go up there. And uh, I I just, you know, I, I just wonder how much responsibility these women had in the matter, you know? And, and also, you know, you can get up and walk out. You may not have a career in Hollywood anymore, but you can get up and walk out. You do have that ability. Um... So I'm just wondering why any woman would go up to his hotel room knowing what everybody in Hollywood knew, including me, and I don't live in Hollywood. <laughs> I would have They never... must have missed the memo. I don't know. Yeah, somehow, you know. And he got away with this for years because everybody was going, oh, well, that's Harvey. Well, then who's guilty in this? Harvey's certainly guilty. But how about all the people that kind of, kind of condoned it you know? Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, weren't they uh, 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 in uh, having a certain culpability? By the way, do you have any questions to ask me? You usually have had quizzes for me about things. I well, I don't have any specific... Well, you know so much about Hollywood, but I was thinking before social media, like the early days of Hollywood, the producers... they. <laughs> They must have gotten away with stuff that Harvey Weinstein would have looked like a choir boy. Oh, you hear, you hear stories from, uh, who did I hear? Somebody actually raped, if I'm not mistaken, Shirley Temple. Jesus, really? Yeah. Yeah. And you do know about Kirk Douglas. No. He raped Natalie Wood. Are you serious? Yeah, Natalie Wood came up to try out for a part or whatever in one of his films. She was about 15 at the time. And it is reported, we could say it's rumor, but it, 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 is, it is one of those kind of rumors that's around so much that you believe it may be true, uh, that uh, he, uh, he, he literally uh, raped her. And Holy Christ. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Um, that's, that, he was one of my heroes. Now I feel bad. Yeah, and I feel bad for her because, man, when I saw her in Rebel Without a Cause, I got a my my I got a teenage Woody at that time. <laughs> yeah, she was hot. No, oh, she was she a beautiful and uh, she was my type, you know, brunette, Russian, God. See, yeah. See, we like you and me. We like the brunettes. I was never big on blondes. No, I I never liked bl blondes either. But brunettes, oh man! Yeah. And, and Natalie Wood was the queen of the brunettes at that time. You know, and and it, when I watched her in Rebel Without a Cause, she was so vulnerable. You know, I also like my women vulnerable, not because I can take advantage of them. I just like that. <laughs> I, no, I just like the quality of vulnerability. I find it sexy. You know, because mm -hmm. because a woman who is vulnerable isn't really hiding anything from you. You know, so you can 
you can believe her when she says certain things. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. But um, who was your big, who was your, when you were growing up and you were watching movies, who got you hot? I got really hot, I think, Raquel Welch, when I saw her in Bedazzled. I just, uh, oh, really? Yeah, it was 68, so I was like, yeah, it's probably 16, so, it, so it was, yeah, she looked, she was, she was pretty amazing for uh, quite a while. Well, I kind of, I was, I was hot for Ursula Andress when she came out of the water and docked. Oh, her. that was amazing, yeah, my God, yeah. I mean, what an iconic image that is of her in a in a bikini, uh, coming out of the water, uh, packing a knife. By the way, she had a knife on the side of her. I mean, she was hot. Um, she was married to a guy that got so many hot. What was the guy's name? He got so many hot women. Uh, oh, John Derrick. John Derrick. No, yeah. no, was it John Derrick? Yeah, wasn't I think no. wasn't he married to Ursula Andress and who else? He was else? married to Ursula Andress and then he divorced her and then he married Bo Derek. Bo Derek, yeah. yeah, yeah. But he he supposedly he was just the rake in Hollywood. He got them all, you know. <laughs> and he wasn't one of the big actors, you know. You go John Derek, really, you know. Now who was rumored to have the biggest penis in Hollywood? That was always Milton Berle, right? I think it was Milton Berle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there was also uh, Sonny Tufts, was it? He was the one that uh, that uh, got into an argument with Milton Berle as to who had the biggest penis, and <laughs> and um, I, I think it was it was either Tufts or or Berle who said, "I'll pull out just enough to win." <laughs> <laughs> Sonny Tufts. I never, I never heard that. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'll, t I'll tell you what was great about um, about Burl. So I had him on my show. Do you remember I had him on my show? You maybe you weren't. I do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, at a certain point during the interview, I said, uh, "I have an audience out there that expects a lot out of me, and if I don't ask you the following question, they're not going to think I did right by them." And he said, it's true. <laughs> he didn't ask, even wait for me to ask the question. That's cool. He said, it's true. You know. So. He got, in 1950, NBC gave him a, hundred, a contract, 100000 a year for 30 years, back when that was huge money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think he kept getting it for the rest of his life, didn't he? It was 30 years, yeah, until 30 1980. Years, 30 probably. years, yeah. Wow. Well, you know something? I, he, he was worth it because he did establish television. Yeah, it, he was probably the first big star, right? He, 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 that was the, he was the first big star. I remember as a kid, there was a, I lived in North Beach, and down at the bottom of the hill, right on one side of the park down there, that I can't remember the name of the park right now. Uh, you know the park I'm talking about. Um, there was a place, a hardware store called Fagoni and Riley. Now, how I can remember that name, and I can't remember my wife's name, is beyond me, but Fagoni and Riley. And we used to go down there on Tuesday nights, and they had a speaker outside and a TV set, about a 13-inch TV set in the window. And people would be crowded Mom. around this furniture store to watch Milton Berle. Because in those days, most people didn't have a TV set, you know? And so if you were going to watch a TV set, you had to go somewhere where they were showing. And in, in Fagoni and Riley, 8 o'clock, Tuesday nights, I remember the date, there was a TV set on in the window of Fagoni and Riley with a speaker outside so you could hear it and everybody was like, let me see, let me see, let me see, you know. And that's how big Milton Berle was. Mr. Tuesday Night. Yeah, and and he wasn't that great, you know. I mean, Milton Berle as a comedian was, how, how could we describe him, mediocre maybe? Yeah. I mean, never terrific. but for some A lot of stock jokes. Yeah. But for some reason, he come out every week dressed as something, most of the time in a women's woman's dress, 
and and uh, um, uh, you know it was a full entertainment show. And then the next big show I can remember that my father used to love, and this is when we first got our t- own TV set, and we were living in Marin. Uh, with an antenna that was 20 feet tall because that's the only way we could get a signal from the city. Jesus. Right? Um, um, My father loved your show of shows with uh, Sid Caesar, you know. And so we watched that every week. And I don't think I appreciated it as much when I was a kid because not the kind of thing a kid watches. Right. Yeah, I've never seen it, but I don't. Know, I heard it was great. If you go back, there's a, you can probably find it somewhere. There's a there's a compilation called "The Best of Your Show of Shows." I defy you to watch that for the hour and a half that it runs, and not come out of it saying this is some of the greatest comedy I've ever seen. Wow. I mean, look at the writers you had. Woody Allen, right? Woody Allen, Neil Simon, Mel Brooks. Uh, who were some of the other people? There were a whole bunch of them. I mean, big people who went on to just incredible careers. Uh, in fact, did you ever see the movie My Favorite Year? No. The movie about uh, um, uh, this kid who works for a show like your show shows, who has to take care of this swashbuckling movie star and try and keep him from being drunk while they're, while they're supposed to be a guest on the show, has one of the greatest lines of all time. Peter O'Toole plays the Errol Flynn-type character. And when he suddenly realizes it's going to be live television, he says, I'm a movie actor. <laughs> I'm a movie actor. I'm not an actor. I'm a movie star. That was the line. Uh, but it was... The, that was a true story that happened to Mel Brooks. That when he was doing your show shows, he was kind of the youngest guy on the staff. And they had Errol Flynn was supposed to be the guest on the show. And uh, it was his job to make sure he stayed sober all week. Wow. And so the movie, My Favorite Year, is about that situation. I'll have to see that. That sounds funny. And it doesn't say it's written by by Mel Brooks, but it had to be. And they're not okay. saying. And the director, I I don't think ever directed another movie. I think probably Mel Brooks had his fingerprint over the whole thing, but he didn't want to put his fingerprint on it because he wanted people to take it as a separate entity. It was like when he was doing all those films, like uh, uh, who was the Francis? Remember the movie Francis? Or did you know Mel Brooks produced The Elephant Man? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, Yeah. but he didn't, he just said Brooks film. He didn't put Mel Brooks on it because he didn't want everybody to think it was going to be a comedy. So I think he kept his name off of My Favorite Year because he didn't want it to be perceived in a certain way. But man, that's one of my favorite comedies of all time. If you haven't seen it, you got to watch it. Yeah, that's a, I'm not an actor. I'm a movie star. That's all. Also, has one of my other favorite lines. Uh, Selma <laughs> Diamond. I don't know if you remember Selma Diamond. Is in it. Night Court. Yeah, and she plays a woman who is uh, works in the uh, you know is is like a costumer or something like that, and she's in the bathroom, and uh, the women's bathroom, and in comes um, uh, uh, Peter O'Toole as I can't remember the name of the actor he plays now and he goes in and starts taking a leak and she yells at him this is for women and he says so's this man but occasionally I have to run fluid through <laughs> that's my other favorite line from that movie so okay, you gotta, gotta watch that, it man. gotta watch it it's just a great film just a great film well, let's see how much time have we spent here. Oh, we were up we to, burned it up. We're up oh, to, I wonder how much the TVs cost when you're looking at that place in North Beach. When I was looking, oh, at, at that time, I think a TV set was about. I seem to vaguely remember some price around five hundred dollars. Which that's a lot of money then. That's a lot of money back then. Yeah, um, uh, uh, probably more in. Uh, 1948 dollars, I guess, or 52. When was your show of shows? Uh, in that period of time, 
probably more than a flat screen costs today. You know, you can buy. Oh, adjusted for inflation. Yeah, that would be. I uh, think the rents in San Francisco were like a hundred bucks in that era. My parents paid, I believe, thirty-five dollars a month rent for a Jesus for an apartment, a one two two bedroom, big living room, kitchen, uh, apartment in China in in Chinatown. It became Chinatown um, uh, in on Filbert Street. Four twenty three. So, fil- t- 423 so TV Filbert would have been a year's rent. Uh, I I would say so. Yeah, I, yeah, rem- I remember God. it being thirty five dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. So anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time here, Mister Bubs. We've actually gone twenty five minutes on this deal, and I never, we're, well, I never get tired. We're, ti- we're both running out of time. <laughs> I never get tired of talking to you. you know? Yes. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Larry the Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Bye bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, yeah. Okay. Oh, let me turn on my uh, lights here. Okay. Got one person waiting to talk to me. One person. That's it. One person. (laughs) So, um, you know, and I'm a little out of sync, too. Not much. But anyway, um, uh, one person is waiting. And and this is getting a little embarrassing, folks. This is getting just way too embarrassing. Um, uh, I really really don't need this, okay? I'm sorry. I've gotten to the point where uh, I just uh, don't, um, don't really care to do this and be faced with this kind of what can I call it? Uh, lack of interest. Can we call it that in the program? I mean, I've tried to create something here. And to, to have a lack of interest so much that there's only one person waiting, and it's, it's Jeff Stein, and he cares, you know. Uh, but it's just gotten to the point where I, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I don't need this. I don't need that because what it does is it depresses me. And it, it, it uh, lowers my self-esteem. And why should I go on every night and lower my self-esteem by coming on here, looking here, and there's one person waiting to come on the program, okay? But let me let him on because I certainly don't want to deny him the ability to, uh, to be part of this program. Uh, let me see here. Let me go there. There's, uh, there's Jeff. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Wait a minute, you got to turn on your microphone. It isn't on. No, still isn't on, uh, Jeff. Still isn't on. Maybe if I tell you to do it. Uh, ask to unmute. Okay. I, 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 he doesn't know where to unmute. You just go over to... Uh, you see over on the very end of the bottom of your of your of your screen uh, is a thing that says mute and just click on that well i guess he's not going to um in fact he's frozen now uh, yeah well anyway we got josh wheeler here hello josh Hello. How much longer do you think I should put up with this? Uh, just this, uh, what can we call this? This uh, attack on my self-esteem by coming here to do this show, and then there's nobody waiting to come on. You know. Oh, they can have people coming along. Well, yeah, but you people know, people just uh, running late, probably like I was. Well, you know, I mean, it's just it's it's it's, it's getting to me, you know. I mean, I'm doing. I'm down to three nights a week. I just made, uh, just leave this at my Monday show, and that's it. You know. Um, well, I think there's still plenty of interest for it. Just uh, probably got people just uh, coming on. Patrick's supposed to be here in a minute. He will. Talking I mean, to ho- him. Hopefully, so. hopefully, he will, and that would be nice. Yeah, I, he should be. He was just. Uh, wait a minute. Now hold on. Talk to him. Jeff, two minutes Jeff, ago, nod your head if you can hear me. Jeff, never... can you hear me? <laughs> Huh? Yes, you can hear me, right? 
Nod your head if you can hear me. Okay, see at the very bottom of the, of the uh, Zoom, okay, there is over at the very right, see the very right-hand side of the Zoom? Okay, see where it says mute? Huh? See, I can't believe he doesn't, am I, am I right? It does say that, right, uh, Josh? Over at the very right-hand side, it says mute, right? Uh, uh, on mine, it's the bottom left corner. Bottom left corner. Got to yeah, the bottom move left. the mouse Excuse around. Me, the bottom the left. The bottom left. The bottom. All the way up. to the bottom left. And it says uh, it says mute, right? Yes, that is correct. Got yeah, like a yeah. picture of a microphone. And At least you, that's what mine has. And you click on if that, right? Click on that. You can mute or unmute yourself, as far right. as I know. Can you see it, Jeff? Now Jeff is frozen again. Oh, boy. Yeah, he must be having trouble. <laughs> Only have two people on and one can't get on. Uh, that's that's a really wonderful. How you, how you doing, Josh? I'm pretty good. Yeah. I'm, uh, you know, wrapped up from the long week, but pretty good other than that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, um, I, I'm, um. I, I, I'm just getting very depressed about just the state of the nation as a whole and the, the total lack uh, of caring uh, that this administration, not this administration, but that the whole Congress and everybody has for the citizens of this country. You know, I mean, people pay taxes. They expect something for their money. And then when they don't get it, it's a pain in the ass. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Right. Uh, yeah, I agree. I certainly find it disappointing that um, we are not getting anything because we can't get it all. I mean, I'm getting a little, you know, I'm getting a little worn out with that. I mean, it's it's getting to the brink of where we're not going to get, you know, anything done, mm -hmm. you know, because we couldn't get everything that we wanted done. I mean, it, you know, it's going to, going to ruin the Biden administration's, uh, you know, chance at getting anything done. I mean, I understand they're not going to get everything they want, but for goodness sakes, we've got to do something to help people with what we can and while we can, you know, I mean, and they've boxed themselves into this corner with all this demanding and all that now for all the complaining they're doing about, you know, uh, uh, Senator Manchin and Senator Cinema having all this power and not you know doing the right thing and everything i mean i get the complaints and i'm a little tired of those two as well but they're giving it to them by not getting some things done that they could do that they would be okay with i mean you know this day and age when you have a any sort of chance to pass something that's bipartisan you know if you've got enough to well, do it i, I can be you good better do it I'll give i mean you me, know I, I mean i don't know what else to say about that uh, i mean i get I get it, but it's just tough. Yeah, well, Cinema uh, voted, for instance, against uh, the prescription drug bill, which would uh, take uh, prescription drugs uh, and uh, uh, allow Medicare to bid for them, okay, which would drive the price down on them. Because in, uh, it, right now, they cannot, you know, ask them to bid on the drugs they have to say what the drugs cost and then medicare has to pay them medicare can't yeah. say wait a minute like in canada the reason drugs are so cheap in canada folks okay is that uh uh the government there tells them what they're going to pay for it you know right. they don't have yeah. to sit there and, and argue about it and uh, uh it, it, isn't it time isn't it time that that we did the same thing here? It, it, you know, I find that ridiculous. And and cinema uh, didn't uh, voted against it or has been arguing against it because she took money from the prescription drug people. Yeah. You know, I mean, I I wish these people would quit working on their own behalf and start working on ours. You know, and I think that, you know, we should have, uh, I mean, what, what's wrong with uh, single-payer health care? 
What's wrong with that? What's wrong with taking care of dental? You know, I mean, the, we paid taxes all these years. We should get something for our money. Rather than you know, oh well, we'll give you we'll give you Medicare, but we'll only give you uh, oh there, uh, uh, Jeff is okay now. Did you find it okay, Jeff? Yes. Okay. Remember where it is from here on in. You know? Yeah, but I'm still getting a double. Oh, you got I, audio coming from your browser. I know. Yeah. I can't get rid of that. Well, uh, go to see where it, uh, you've in, on your browser. You've got GabNet. Just uh, just kill that. I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, okay. Well, uh, mute yourself till you can figure out how to get rid of it. Okay. Anyway. So uh, I just I just don't, I don't know. Am I wrong? I mean, we pay taxes. Shouldn't we get something for our money? And, and you know, single payer health care is something that's going to be paid by your taxes. So you're kind of paying for it, but you're paying for it out of your tax money. I, I just, I, you know, I, I never could understand why Medicare is, uh, takes care of, of 80% of your medical. The other 20% you have to take care of. So I pay every month about $200 a month to Medicare to take care of my Medicare, out of my Social Security, take care of my Medicare, and I spend another almost $400 a month for the prescription drugs and for um, um, for prescription drugs and uh, my my supplemental in other words the other 20% why am I paying more for the 20% than I'm paying for the 80% yeah you know yeah I mean right I mean I and I you know I know folks you're going oh there he goes he's off again on that rant you know it's just because he's an old guy. Yeah, it's because I'm an old guy. I think if I were like 20 years old and doing this show, I wouldn't give a shit about Medicare. But one day, <laughs> folks, no matter how old you are, one day you are going to give a shit about Medicare. I'm sure. I'm sure Patrick gives a shit about <laughs> Medicare because you you get taken care of by Medicare, don't you, with your medical? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm. You know my feelings on. The rest of it, we're wasting money on sports stadiums and that. The, so, oh, yeah, of course. I go along so with you on that. fuck it. Yeah. No, but I go along with you on that, of course. You know? I understand that. Now what? You know. Hello there, uh, Kevin. Um, uh, uh, but, you know, I mean, uh, I, I, just, I just think it's about time that these guys get it together in Washington and start doing something for us. But everything that comes up that is something that's going to help us, they they keep voting down. What's their problem? Right. I mean, that's you know that's what I'm saying. I mean, they, you know, unless I totally don't understand it, mm -hmm. they could have passed some pretty decent infrastructure weeks ago. I mean, they could have passed something that the last three, four presidents have been trying to do. Mm -hmm. And somehow, by some miracle, it was finally there. And then, you know, the Democratic Party, almost as a whole, said, "Well, we're only going to do that if we can do all this other well, stuff." Well, I don't and think I don't think that Biden. You know, they, I don't think. Part of it is on. I don't think. And it will, like, turn the volume down to zero. Uh, uh, now I've got okay. him talking to somebody. And you can see him, and you can see wait, me. Wait, wait, turn off your audio. Okay, but the problem is... Turn, turn off your audio. Uh, 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 Jeff, because turn off your audio. You hear it, Jeff! You hear twice. Jeff, can you hear me? Okay, so let's move. Jeff, can you hear me? No. Jeff, well, if... The problem is... Oh, boy. You, have You're on probably going to have to so mute him or cut him off. Right. Yeah, I'm going to have to mute him. And go back in. Let me see here. Let me mute him. Uh, the, where see. is it? Mute, Let's mute, mute, dump mute. Them. I have to find it. I never. I usually right. never have to mute anybody. Leave but, meeting. But uh, you know, you guys are. Well, we just got rid of them. No, oh, well. Anyway, um, uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. So I mean, it, it, it's just that I. It, it's kind of starting to get to me, you know. And I and I got a big dental bill the other day for about three grand, and I went. Why do I have to pay for this? Why can't the government pay for this? You know? I mean, come on. I'm senior. I'm 81 years old. Well, look out for me, okay? I looked out for you all those years, you know? 
Am, am I wrong, Patrick? Tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. Oh, what? Well, okay. Why? Why am I wrong? Well, I, I'm just speaking from my own experience, and I don't speak for everybody, but I'm stuck in a state where we pay for fucking sports stadiums and every other thing well, on a taxes. And you know what? I don't want to pay any more taxes. Period. No, 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 no. Nobody's saying you're going to pay any more taxes. We're saying you should get, should get something for the tax money you're already spending. Yeah, but my state wastes taxes on other shit. Yeah, but that's your... Josh has been trying to explain it. Where yeah. the Democrats had the infrastructure shit out there month, week, even years ago. And mm -hmm. they could have passed just the fucking infrastructure... But no, we want to add all this other horse shit onto it. And then there's people like me who are saying, why are we spending all this yeah, other but, 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 money? Patrick, Patrick, let me stop you there. I agree with you on that. But to begin with, you're talking about your state taxes. You're not talking about your federal taxes. Okay? I'm talking about the federal tax. What yeah, do but you... it would be up to the state to do individually what they would with coverage no, no, because Medicare is what takes care of people medically, and it's it is a national. And that will never, it will never pass. It. So well, I'm being okay, my question here. is, why will it never pass? Why, why don't we pass things that are good for people? Because we waste money in Washington. It that six trillion dollar bill that does absolutely zero for anyone. When you put the whole thing out there and nothing's going to pass, if they would just structure, like Josh said, let's do the infrastructure shit first. Get that done. Okay, great. Now we start that. Mm -hmm. Now we can look at maybe it is, um, you know, universal health care or whatever you want to call it, but one piece at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't eat a whole fucking pie at, the sa at, at one. You got to eat a piece well, at a time. Well, let me argue with you that the reason why we have to eat the pie all at once is because it was just recently baked and it's hot. And the fact is that if we don't eat it, it's going to go stale. Now, we haven't eaten it in all these years. I mean, that's it's the problem. It's stale already, Alec. Is there anything happening? No. And the reason it's not happening is going to keep fucking it up. Well, how come it works in other countries? How come you go to a place like England, they've got a, a really very good national guess, health system? My guess is in other countries, they're smart enough to do piece by piece no, by piece. No, I'll tell you what it was. You want to know what happened in England? I know in England. I'm speaking other places. Well, now. what happened was after World War II, a lot of those countries had been in the throes of a horrible war. I mean, they had their, their towns and their cities decimated. And they decided, especially like in England, let's give ourselves a little gift. And the gift they gave themselves was national health. And, and, but we have no sense of that here. We don't care about each other. We don't take care of each other. We don't realize the reason you have a government is to, is to, is to take care of people and to take care of each other. We're kind of, we pay taxes because we're batching it. You know what I'm saying? We're all putting into this pot, and out of this pot, stuff is done to take care of us and take care of our needs and make sure that we're okay. It's not to go and pay money to, well, I don't know, some big organization to build a military base at exorbitant prices. I mean, that's what, what goes on. And I think the people should be considered first. What do you, what do you think, uh, Kevin? Well, yeah, it's priorities, obviously, and uh, the country doesn't know how to set priorities. That's a problem. But we don't care about each other. Well, uh, I, won't I, say, I won't say we don't. I'm saying those people in Washington are useless. They're just useless. Well, it, it, it's more the corporations are, are driving all this because they have to make money. That's, the, that's what it seems like. The corporations have to make money, and if they can make money and help everybody at the same time, that's great, but mm -hmm. I think it's more the corporations got to make their money first. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
I, I, I think that we've got to, somewhere along the line, we have to change our whole mentality. And quite frankly, I don't think this, this country is going to last that much longer under the way, in the way it's been going, okay? Just going to totally fall apart. Am I being too pessimistic, Patrick? I, mean, but... I think so because I think so because it's it, it is as much as you think it's not working it's it's kind of working but uh, it's a pain in the ass working kind of you know? working kind of working at this point in time is not an acceptable answer because well, we've been I, around yeah, for what the two hundred how many years we've been around since seventeen seventy six well we haven't had insurance that long have we no but what I'm saying this, is by this time we should have gotten this whole thing down perfectly yeah we haven't had fucked up insurance like we have for two hundred years yeah there's yeah. no way no two ways about that but the the insurance situation has been pretty fucked up for what about thirty forty years well I mean how, how is it then I pay I pay a couple hundred bucks a month I think uh, off of my social security to pay for my Medicare. Okay, I find that to take care of eighty percent of my of my uh, medical. That's fine, but then I've got another three hundred or, or three hundred and thirty bucks for supplemental and another like fifty or fifty five for for prescription. So that's double what I'm paying for the eighty percent. I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. Insurance companies aren't being regulated. They aren't being told what they can charge. Yeah, that's pretty much what I was just saying. Yeah. I mean, that's the problem. You know, and, and by the way, insurance companies, until Reagan, were nonprofit. They had to be, by law. Okay? And, and then, how many years ago? About 30 years ago. Yeah, and, years. and Reagan got rid of it, and look at what we got now. You know, three hundred bucks, uh, three hundred thirty bucks a month. I'm not paying for it. Marjorie's company is paying for it, but still, eventually, if she stops working, I'm gonna have to pay for it. Three hundred thirty bucks a month. And our contributions went down and down and down since then. Mm -hmm. Remember, we used to get insurance, and now it was, oh, we're gonna we're gonna change your contribution. Our contribution is gonna be less. Yours is gonna be more, and yours is gonna be less, and it's gonna be more and more. We ended up contributing more and more. And it became the same way with your life insurance. It became more with your pensions. And all of a sudden, there's no pensions. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, mm -hmm. there's 401ks. And you're going to be doing it yourself <laughs> and a whole bit. It's all, it all evolved over the last 30, 40 years. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just, I, I think it's time. You're to on your own is what they said. You're on your own. <laughs> you know, people say, well, what do you expect? The, do you expect the government to take care of you? Well, I paid, um, I paid, I'm sure in my lifetime, over a million dollars in taxes, okay? Yes, I do, okay? Right, and, then, and that's, that's a good argument for a Republican to say that you're paying your taxes and what are they doing with them, which I kind of agree with. Yeah, but well, who's, who's fucking it up? The Republicans right. usually are fucking up how much <laughs> money, that matter. money they're using. That's the answer. Is it doesn't matter who's in office; they're fucking it up. Yeah, I mean, we don't want we don't want to spend money on infrastructure. Somebody had a joke on Saturday Night Live about infrastructure. Oh, that's water under the bridge. Oh, wait a minute, there is no bridge. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, come on. I mean, these are <laughs> things that make this a better country and make it a better country for all the citizens who live in it. I mean, I don't know. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, but I'm, but I'm just saying, does, I mean, I, I know that a lot of people that listen to your shows would want to call up and, and give a million arguments and everything, and it's fine, I'm open to all of it, but I'm just saying, but does it make sense that we're not going to build any bridges, or does it make sense that we're not going to pave any roads or replace any water pipes because we can't also get, you know, uh, child care and K through 12 guaranteed school or what? I mean, does it make does that make sense? I can't remember where it is. I mean, but I'm they, just saying, if yeah. you were told you can have one of these and not the other, okay, but you can't have both, are you just going to say, well, then I'll have none? I mean, I, if that's what you want. Okay, okay I'm, I, I know fine. where we can get the money. I know where the money is, but they'll never do it. We spend more money <laughs> on military in this country than any country in the world. In fact, yeah. 
we spend over 50 cents of every tax dollar on funding the military. Yeah. The next highest country for that is England, and it's something like 9%. Yeah, but okay. I, but my point is that on the infrastructure side of it, we don't even have to look for the money. We've already found it, and we've already found enough Republicans who have said, okay, we're fine with that. We'll vote for that tomorrow. I know a lot of Republicans said they wouldn't, but they found enough that said that they would. And then the problem came on the Democratic side where they had enough, you know, defectors of, you know, the yeah. AOC variety and whatever who said, well, Held, if we can't have it all, we're not voting for that anymore. I mean, they had it right there. They they could have it, and, and they said, "Listen, if I can't have my steak and my potato, I just won't eat." Okay, but the people not eating in that little illustration are me and you. <laughs> so my question is, let me ask this. You know, okay, let me ask this. We got a guy by the name of Joe Biden. He's president of the United States now. Is he doing a crappy job or is he doing a good job? He doesn't seem to be able to rally the troops very well. Well, he's I mean, trying I, to let go. I, he, I don't know that he's doing a good or a, a bad. I think that he's doing a mediocre job in a toxic environment, which may be as well as can be expected. Uh, I mean, or at least at this particular well, time... If, as well as can be, uh, as well as can be done. I hate to go back to the Stone Age because I, I am about to go back to the Stone Age for a lot of people, even some of the people that are here. But LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, when he was president of the United States, would not have put up with this shit. Okay, I mean, he would literally drag people in from Congress, sit them down, read them the Riot Act, and say, "Here's why you're going to do it. Because if you don't do it," You're in big trouble, okay? Well, and I and he he got yeah. he got stuff he got things like the Civil Rights Act passed. He got Medicare passed. I mean, he got things that everybody considered almost impossible to get done. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, look, I I definitely would be in favor of seeing more of that attitude. Um, but I think that. I don't know that it's going to do too much better just because I think the era that the two presidents are operating in mm -hmm. are uh, inherently pretty different. I mean, well, it's a much more hostile environment. Well, yeah. yes. I mean, that's what I'm saying is, I mean, there are people now on both sides who will openly and willingly sell out their own beliefs. For the sake of, but can you, you know, either can you their imagine, own power or for the sake of their own party. Can I mean, you imagine a time when the racism inherent in this country was unbelievable, okay? The South was segregated, all right? That this guy, by his force of will, got Congress and the Senate to pass the Civil Rights Bill, Yeah. Okay. He did it under impossible odds. So sure. I don't care what the odds are today, and it's a very toxic atmosphere, I'll give you that. Yeah. But what could be more toxic than the way the South was during uh, during the period of segregation when look, the I, Civil Rights I, uh, I'm not going to be able to disagree yeah. much with that. I mean, I, I certainly would live with a little bit more of Joe Biden saying, I'm, you know, everyone said I was too old to be president or whatever, so you know what? I'm 127 fucking years old, and I don't care if I get reelected. I don't care if I drop dead tomorrow. If I have to piss a whole bunch of people off to get this done, mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do. Because I'll either be out of office or dead in a few weeks anyway, so it really doesn't matter. But if I really believe in this, and if I really want to help some people, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and 50 years from now or whatever, when I'm dead and when I'm gone, the historians will sort it out like they always do, okay? It'll mm -hmm. all come to the top, and they'll sort it all out, and I'll probably look all the better for it. Like like we do Lyndon Johnson now, right? I mean, mm -hmm. but but when Lyndon Johnson left, did a lot of people shed a lot of tears? No, I don't think so, right? I mean, he was 
so fucking aggravated with the people, and they were so aggravated with him that he didn't even run for re-election. You know? Well, he uh, he uh, uh, said, uh, "I'm done. The hell with." It. He you had a, I mean? he had a, he had one problem. Okay, mm-hmm. he didn't know how to cope with uh, the looming war in Vietnam, the conflict right. in Vietnam, and um, uh, uh, Walter Cronkite. Again, maybe I'm referencing somebody that a lot of you people are not that aware of who was the evening newscaster. He was America's, what could we call him, America's dad. Um, he uh, went to Vietnam and he came back and he said, this is a war we can't win. We've got to get out of there right now. And, and, and Cronkite wasn't the kind that usually came out with that kind of thing, but he saw it and he couldn't believe what was going on. And supposedly, Lyndon Johnson, when he heard that, when he was watching Cronkite say that, looked at an aide and said, if I've lost Walter Cronkite, I've lost the country. And that's when he decided not to run again for president. Uh, that's what, that was his Achilles heel. It wasn't civil rights, you know, it wasn't uh, any of that. It was, it was basically... Uh, oh, that, right. I mean, that was, you know, his It wasn't his Medicare. But, you know, there's been a lot of work done since the time he was out. And uh, mm-hmm. the, a man named Robert Caro is, the, is you know, really his main biographer who's written, you know, the biography of his life in like three, maybe four volumes, you know, uh, Ascent to Power and all that other master of the Senate, you know, and all that other kind of stuff. And, I mean, Caro is his big biographer and he's uncovered a lot. And, you know, it, it's it's pretty clear to him at least that, in a lot of ways, when it, when LBJ decided to stop and not run, that you know the the people were really the whole situation was really wearing down on him. I mean, the you know the hey 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 LBJ, how many kids did you kill today? Right. Was right. constantly grinding him down. I mean, and and the stress of it all, you know, for not for the first time, mm-hmm. but for once finally had a president who just said you, you know what <laughs> this fucking job is for somebody else. yeah i, I don't I'm fucking I, I, done it, it, <laughs> you know? it, it, do i need this shit i need right to- i mean look people quit jobs and presidents are people i mean you know look washington quit i mean i don't want to i don't mean quit as like he quit on his country but you know washington he was done right i mean he wanted nothing but to Go home to By Mount the way, Martin am, I, am I right or wrong about this? You're more, crops. you're more of a historian than I am. I heard that uh, Washington, when he when they were trying to figure out who was going to lead the country, they were going to pronounce whoever they had to lead the country king. Well, they were going to make a king, but and and, I mean, and Washington was the one who said, "No, I won't be king, but why don't you make me a thing called a president?" Well, not uh, no, I wouldn't say it went like that, not at all. I mean. Would, would you the say- government was created in an open and fair way, and I think basically everyone involved understood that whatever system of government we set up would have a head at it at at some point, whatever it was going to be called or however it would function, and that that head of government was going to be Washington. I think that was overwhelmingly accepted. Um, anything else was rather unthinkable, mm-hmm. and I think he knew that. He didn't want the job. But I think he knew that he didn't have a whole lot of choice. Here's my. But I don't think it was as simple as they said, "We'll make you king." I mean, even with Washington as king, there were people that would have fucking lost their minds. Well, I think if they did, they didn't know anything else. They didn't, you know, president was not. It was not something that you had to lead the country. No, I would agree that they didn't know anything else. But I'll tell you what they knew, and that is that despite the fact that they didn't know anything else they knew that that isn't that that was not what they wanted now okay, here's, i'm, not, I'm here's, not saying they knew what they wanted but they knew that that wasn't well what here's they the argument i've come up with over the years really what we created here wasn't so much a democracy as a corporation uh to begin with look at the name the united states of america isn't that a corporate name you know, I mean, we have we have countries called Italy and England and France, and then there's the United States of America, and yeah, it's a corporation. Put LLC after it. <laughs> a, 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 yeah, LLC it should have. And then, then on top of that, you come up with um, uh, 
uh, you have you have a president, you have a vice president, you have a treasurer, you know. Uh, you, we go on and on and on. Uh, Lord. So, I mean, really, didn't we build a, a corporation here rather than a country? Yeah, I mean, and the it, it may look like that, but, you know, it's it's certainly... Or it's different, company, though. I mean, it, it has or, some similarities, but I mean... Or did, or did companies make themselves look like countries? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, yeah, I mean, well, look, what, what was set up was was certainly going to have Washington at the head. And, you know, there were... No, no one really wanted a monarchy. I mean, I, I can basically attest to that strongly. I mean, you know, the records of the Constitutional Convention, for instance, are clear, and there, and there was a particular day in July mm -hmm. that Alexander Hamilton gave a pro-monarchy speech for a couple of hours, mm -hmm. and when he was done, it was so uh, widely received that he basically left the convention and didn't come back <laughs> until the very end. I mean, that's how well it went over. I mean, he was basically humiliated, and he just left. You know, so I mean, it it that was a, a a complete lead balloon, if you will. So I mean, you know, monarchy wasn't wasn't coming. Uh, so there were a couple options on the table, but I mean, that that certainly wasn't going to happen. But look, what what got set up was was, in, you know, imperfect, but has been perfected on a daily basis, you know, since that time. I mean. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Well, to say that it started out at zero and now it's a hundred, and you think it should be a five hundred? I guess. That's oh, I don't. Fine, I don't think we're anywhere near a hundred. You know, they say in order to, you know, we're supposed to create a more perfect union. I don't think we've ever done that. I don't think we've even even well, come close. You I, know. I guess I would disagree. I mean, I think that where it started. If you did a, if you did a, you know, one of those stupid, uh, how it started, how it's going pictures, you know, I think it would be a pretty nice, uh, a pretty nice portrait. Well, you know, I, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I think there, you know, I don't know that this is the worst time we've ever had. I mean, I, I remember no, uh, certain not. periods of time, like, uh, well, I talk about when I grew up in the fifties, I think it was pretty bad back then. You had things like the house on American activity subcommittee, and you had a whole bunch of stuff like you had segregation, which was terrible. Uh, Absolutely. You know, uh, and and so we've improved on some of those uh, areas, but nevertheless, I just don't think we, you know, we've lived up to our expectations as a country. I think you know. No, I don't. I don't know that anyone can ever live up to the expectations Alan, that we Alan's, have Alan's because been, yeah, our expectation is to be you know the most free and the most open country are in we, the history of the world are and we, that's are we that's hard to achieve are okay we? but i, I think, think we are. i yeah. think that we're more free than most and uh, i don't know i i think I, I, that overall you you have more opportunity here than you do and many, most, if not all, let of me the put places. it this way: If I put a Biden bumper sticker on my car in Wyoming, because we had a woman who called one night from Wyoming, I'd probably get my car keyed. Okay, that would never happen in England. I'm sorry, that's just not the way they do business. All right. So to say, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't about, know that. about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, England, France, I mean, Spain. You're all talking about countries that, at one point or another in their history, drug their leaders out in the street and lopped their heads off. Well, yeah, did, didn't they? Uh, I mean, they, uh, you know, this uh, might be the only one their, that hasn't. Uh, didn't one of their parliament guys just get stabbed last week or a couple weeks ago? Yep. Yeah. Uh, that was in England, I believe. Got stabbed. Yeah. 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 So they're, he, they're not so safe over there. I, did, he didn't die though, did he? I don't he did. think so. No. No, he, he did. did. I don't. He did. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, as far as I know. Yeah. yeah. Right. Hmm. But he was attacked. Alan, right. you've been very quiet tonight. I, I, I'm I'm uh, enjoying the conversation. I like listening to Josh when he talks about <clears throat> history, mm -hmm. country. And the only thing I really came on, well, I came on because I usually come on, but uh, is that I don't know how this all started. Did anybody hear? I don't want to change the subject. No, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, did Did anybody hear that Facebook is in hot water? What, what, a lot what, of documents have popped up 
showing that they are culpable in the January 6th in insurrection. Hmm. Well, I, I do know that they are thinking of changing the name of the parent company. Yeah. They may do it as soon as next week. The changing really? it from Facebook to whatever, but Google a while back. What, Google is not, the company is not Google. The company is Alphabet. Alphabet. What, yeah. what, what happened with Facebook is they uh, let people uh, say, yeah, we're going to meet at such and such a place and do the insurrection. And they didn't say the word insurrection, but they, they let people post stuff on Facebook that was anti-American, anti-whatever you want to call it. Well, and they, and they fed into it. And they didn't stop it. And even my my question my question is this, okay, Alan, what level? And I think Patrick and I may agree on this one. At what level do you start telling people they can't write that sort of stuff if you have what is considered an open forum? Well, maybe yeah, I don't know. I, I maybe they ought to not have such an open forum when it is now involved. it's against the law to threaten the president of the United States. <clears throat> So Absolutely. if you see that in print, you take that down, okay? I mean, right. I've had people who've done that sort of thing on my radio shows, and I immediately hit the seven-second delay and get rid of it. Sure. You know, uh, but what I'm saying is, what is c to be considered free speech? I mean, if you if you say, okay, you, you, you get this page, and you can put whatever your thoughts are on it. How much do we limit that thought? Do we suddenly say, "Well, you can't do this," and you can't say, "Hey, we should go to we should go to the cap we should go to the Capitol and protest"? There's nothing wrong with that, okay? I mean, that's the seat of our government. If you can't go there and protest, where can you protest? It's just you can't go inside and start breaking statuary and you know windows and and things like and that. And threatening the lives of Congress. Then that's an attack. All right, right. Yeah. but but I mean. Well, how do you, what are you going to regulate is what the question is. I don't know. I don't know the answer. All I know is it was in the news today. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> as of yesterday, they were still allowing it. I have a feeling that uh, Congress is going to come down on them. And, uh, uh, you know, so if, I, before they go I, after, I, before they go after Facebook, don't you think they should go after Trump? Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, that's the that that's what's the ridiculous part about that. You know, and, um, and to don't maybe only partly answer your question is, you know, what are you going to regulate or how are you going to regulate that? I think the really the only answer is, is that the government is not necessarily going to do any of that, that a private company such as Facebook should be responsible enough to do that on their own because they clearly have that right mm -hmm. the government whether or not it has that right is you know very very murky water yeah. and in the in the interest of freedom you're going to lean toward they don't but facebook as its own private entity has the clear right to do the so closest it has the clear thing. right to say these are the only six words you can use on our whole fucking website the you can't make sense the, out of them the, that's the, your problem the closest I mean, thing to facebook that i've seen in England, there's a place hey. called Hyde Park, all right? And Hyde Park uh, is a place where on Sundays, anybody can get up on a soapbox and give a speech about anything. He can even talk about the overthrow of the, uh, of the, of the British Empire. He, he, there's no restriction on that. And when I first saw Facebook, I said, it's kind of an electronic Hyde Park is what it is. And that's what I think it it uh, it it has uh, uh, come out, uh, you know, turned into being, evolved, uh, into. evolved into being. And and how do you then violate your your code of operation? Let's say, I, I I'm you not know? I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying it's in the news. Yeah, you know, I have, I have very mixed feelings as to you mm -hmm. should be able to write what you want, but. You, within reason if they're inciting a riot mm -hmm. then probably not if they are you know inciting violence probably not if they're threatening the president's life or congress's life probably not mm -hmm. beyond that you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay i'm okay with them writing whatever they want right so joe gringo well i'm getting rid of them right now so 
And now oh, come on, give him a chance. No, I'm not giving him a chance because he's not uh, he's not answering. Uh, I, I can't stop all that with your stuff, Facebook. I mean, uh, 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 Zoom. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I don't it know. might have been he, Donald Trump, El Gringo. No, he wasn't opening up his camera and he wasn't opening up his microphone. So, to hell with him. I, I, I've never seen that. I've seen the name before, maybe in the chat room. Maybe. Huh. You know. But hello, Jack. How are you? Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. You know, listening to this conversation about how far can free speech go, mm -hmm. the question that came to mind is how far should repressionistic efforts go? Mm -hmm. You know, well, but if we see, want to be here, like here's Canada, the thing. Here's the thing. Canada Canada is where nobody says anything bad. Then I think it'd be an awfully dull country. Well, no. All I'm saying is, is that what what Facebook wants wanted to do with what it is is they say, okay, you have a page, you can say anything you want on it. Uh, how far do you go before you suddenly say, well, you can't say that? Exactly. Exactly. You know, uh, there are always more repressionistic. Uh, efforts than there are efforts to open up content. And by the way, if if the Facebook says we don't want that on our on our Facebook, you have no right to say. But I have freedom of speech. No, you don't. This is a private company. Right. <laughs> You're in their house, okay? But I think that what they don't, what they're afraid of doing, is violating their method of operation, which is, hey, you can get on there and say, hey, I don't like Jack Bishop, okay? What? Not like me? Yeah, I don't uh, like uh, Jeff Stein. What a creep oh, Jeff Stein is. That's a different is, case. You know. There, you know. But, uh, uh, but, but uh, consider this: uh, the dark net is already way beyond Facebook and what and what it allows to happen because it's wide open. It's the wild west. Of, Where uh, can I find the dark net? Dark web. Dark web. Dark. Web. Dark web. Sorry, dark web. Thank you. You, you wouldn't I, I want got, to be I on got, it. It's mostly illegal stuff. No, but where can I find it? If I want to sign on right now to the dark web, how do I get there? You got to go well, to Tor. Got to go to what? Tor. T-O-R. T-O-R? And, that's, Tor and that's the dark net? How is it the dark net? If, if, you I can, if, I can, if I can literally bring it up on my browser, how is it the dark net? I don't know, hmm. but it'll explain it if you go there. I think the dark net is a myth. I, I thought Bill had Dan, uh, one of the guys that works for him, that understands this computer stuff. He, Phil said that he was going to have Dan explain the dark web to you. Did well, he, he, he kind of—I think he did one day. Or okay, I did have him yeah, do I, it one day, but it didn't I, make I, much sense to it, me. It's not a fun place, is what I understand. It's <laughs> mostly criminal enterprise, you know. And uh, I don't know a lot about it actually. So, uh, uh, Brian. Do you know where the dark web is? No. <laughs> Would you know how to find uh, it? Maybe Antifa runs it. You know, I mean, I... I it's yeah. Donald Trump's new uh, chat room. No, this whole idea about there's the dark web, and I go, eh, yeah, I mean, it probably exists, but it's people who are able to talk to each other privately. Okay? For criminal it's reasons. Not, it's, not like, it's not like it's their own Facebook. So you know, your, your credit card companies, like mine probably, uh, say that we scan the dark web for you now to make sure your credit cards and your name, your emails, uh, 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 Google does it and, and scans the dark web for you uh, to make sure that your your whatever is not being used or compromised. Now, are you sure they're really uh, 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 scanning the dark web or are they just saying no. they're scanning the dark no. web? No, I'm not. I'm not sure. You know, dark web is when you turn it off. What would you say? Uh, uh, so the dark web is when you turn off your computer and it's dark. Yeah, there you go. yeah. When you turn it off completely. <laughs> you got a nice bedroom, Kevin. Kevin and and I would ask, I would ask Jack how you find the dark web, but he barely knows well, how I to use a what, computer. I, so, I, you know. I will ask some of my grandchildren, who I'm sure know how to find it. <laughs> I will do that over the weekend. And give me and let me know so I can go find it. Because they sure get a lot of publicity. I wish we got as much publicity for GabNet as they get for not existing. What are you doing up so late, Jack? I thought we weren't going to see you till Tuesday. 
You're well, uh, I got confused yesterday about what day I was dealing with because they changed my times at my um, uh, physical appointments, you know, my, my, my therapy appointments. And, you know, hey, I walked out of there not knowing what day of the week it was and where I was and all that. But it welcome didn't matter. To your, welcome you, to your 50s. Uh, well, I didn't know. I didn't know. You, I, you knew what day of the week it was, and you and you quickly mentioned that. Well, are you on tonight? Last time I checked, oh, I'm okay. sitting here waiting right. for you to get through. There's one day you're not going to be. Uh, <clears throat> possibly. Possibly oh, okay. the 29th. Yeah. And I say it's possible now yeah. because... Donna has said, well, gee, you know, with the COVID, I don't think I still want to go out. I don't think I want to. Uh, so. Okay. Well, I, you know, all, all I know is, uh, what is it? Not next week, but the week after next. I don't know what days I'm going to be here or not be here because we have our trial is starting again. Uh, finally. Then I don't know how early I'll have to get up in the morning for that one. Early enough to go to the bank and write your lawyer another fucking check. Oh, yeah, right, right. Uh, I'm now, day. I'm now, I'm now uh, 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 parsing everything in in how how many uh, in in lawyer hours. Like for instance, I talked about I have to I owe my dentist three thousand dollars. Okay, yeah. and and the way I describe it is that's six that's six that's lawyer. six lawyer hours. Right, right. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. and I think I'm thinking of buying a a twenty five thousand dollar automobile. Oh, that's uh, let's see here. That's fifty lawyer hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or well, Alex, to put it in perspective for you, yeah. One side of my family sued another side, and we were in court, what? in and out of court, for forty years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, we're and, we're going on forty years now, so that's uh, or at least it feels like it. It just feels like anyway. it anyway. Uh, but so I mean, I, 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 I told some some family members, I said, look, when the lawyers have started dying, shouldn't we settle this thing? We had a whole family of lawyers die litigating this case. Wow. Now, granted, it was a pretty yeah. good hunk of money, but lawyers wound up with more than anybody. Brian, how you been? Terrible. I just found out where Kevin is. Kevin's where I'm supposed to be. Where? <laughs> Wait a minute. Kevin... Kevin's in Santa Maria right now for the Custom Nationals with his car. So my car is not ready. Oh, are so you? I'm... Are you? Are you? That is a hotel room, isn't it, Kevin? Yeah. yeah. He's in, so Santa Maria has the Custom Nationals. It's like our biggest show. It's usually in Memorial Day weekend, but because of coronavirus, they pushed it out to October. My car is not ready, so I'm very jealous. Well, what are you doing down there, hey, Kevin? Do you do you go to these car shows? He has his car. Yeah, remember? I have my my car in it. Oh, oh you mean the one that uh, farts? Yeah, yeah, the farting yeah, it's, car. It's sitting next to the original Munster coach. Oh, really? Oh, oh okay. Wow. Now tell me when when the flames come out of the back of that thing. What is the propellant for that? Gasoline. Gas. Oh, really? And it doesn't blow up. No, oh. it's unburned gas. It's unburned. Uh, it, okay. All right. The exhaust. You rev up the engine, you cut off the coil, spit the gas out the exhaust pipe, and it lights it up in the back. Because I saw a documentary on the Batmobile, right. and they were talking about the one that they used on the TV show, and that, that in the back, they actually had, like, uh, I think it's a, 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 a butane or something that made that yeah, flame come that out of the too. back. Yeah. Propane, yeah. Propane, excuse me. I'm, you know, me, Mr. Science. You know. No, it just... It, it, I didn't do it that way because of leaks. I don't like leaks. Well, what type of car do you have? What? What type of fancy car do you have, Kevin? Oh, it's a mutt. Well, we it's lost. A rat. We lost Jack because he has to go do his show. Uh, it's a rat run. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, do you do you know what kind of what did I hear? What what they for the Batmobile? Uh, they took uh, their original car was a Ford. No, uh, Lincoln. Lincoln. Was, it is Lincoln concept car. Yeah. Yes, you're right. It was a Lincoln concept car. Made by Ford. Yeah. But it's a Lincoln. Yeah. Not a Ford. Okay. okay. Hmm. I just thought I'd bring that up. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. Bring the whole bring the whole show to a grinding halt. <laughs> how's, yeah. how's the weather down there, Kevin? It's uh the same as up there. All right. I I hear, I, they say it's warm and muggy. They say uh, you've been having terrible, really. terrible weather in the West Coast, though. 
Yeah, they're going to have some, what is it called? It's called some, like, bomb. It was a cyclone something and a bomb Atmospheric something. River. Yeah, it's a couple yeah, of things. Atmospheric, Atmospheric river. river. But they also said something else. It's going to increase to a, and I'm going to be at the 49er game. Oh, my God. Why am I going, stupid? I sold my uh, ticket. <laughs> yeah, I know. So did all my friends except for one, and I end up going with him, and now there's no tailgating or anything. A cy- a bomb cyclone and an atmospheric river on Sunday. That's the weather report. A bomb cyclone? Bomb yeah. cyclone. This oh, is it's supposed to be the, the worst American at Ball night time. Network. And this now game is at night. Seventh year. Wait a minute, hold on. Talk, like I it. accidentally touched my keyboard over here. Oh. And then that, that happens. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's so Sunday it's, night, huh, Brian? Yeah, so it'll, and it's going to be televised. So if you, oh, if you I'll guys, wave at you. I'll be nice and dry. You'll be nice and wet. Yeah, yeah I'll be on the couch. Turn the four- on the game for a minute, and you'll see the cyclone go through. The Forty ers are doing pretty good this year, aren't they? No, they're not. No, they're not. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. They, they they did beat the Eagles, so so, so <laughs> yeah, I can't say much. My team's terrible. Yeah, but basketball started. It, do we still have baseball? Baseball's still going on, right? Playoffs are going, and yeah, yeah. But the Giants aren't in. So you either. got, and you got football starting. Have we ever had a year where that's happened? Doesn't one usually end and the other one starts? Yeah, basketball starting early this year because usually it started at the beginning of November, and and baseball's about done by then. Is it my imagination, or was there a time when the seasons for these sports were much shorter? Yes, they keep growing. I mean, it's like football, foot, football, football just went to an extra game. Football usually started in October, maybe, and then was through by the middle of uh, of January. And that was it. February, February is when it usually ends in. And now it's, it goes to February and it starts earlier than October. I mean, expansion. Uh, same thing with, with basketball. I think basketball almost seems to be year long for crying out loud. Like yeah, then they have summer leagues and winter baseball leagues and. And yeah. baseball was a much shorter year as well. They were usually through by what mid September, something like that. No, no, that? October. October is usually World Series. Yeah. Really? So yeah, when did it, when did it start? Uh, yeah, I don't know. April. Started, April. April. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But April. you know they do everything they can to make more and more money, right? So. So it's, if it's muggy in Santa Maria, it's very close to the ocean, isn't it? It's like. 20 miles yeah, you east of drive the... in towards Pismo and then come back inland a little bit. Right, right. Yeah. Wow, we're down to 23 people. I guess they don't want to hear about the weather in Pismo <laughs> Beach. I remember back in the 70s when when it, when the sports seasons where there was like a gap, they'd like have, uh, you know, competitions from like the Love Boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fantasy Island and they'd be running around tracks and bullshit like that. Yeah. By the way, just quick, just quickly, uh, as, uh, as a matter of note, I checked today. It turns out the people who listen to the audio version, there are a lot of them. I mean, it's a large number. It's the video that I'm having trouble with lately uh-huh. in, in getting not getting as many people watching it. So, huh. you know, I don't I don't know what the problem is, but, you know, that's it. Anyway. But Monday, Monday, I I was watch, watching on Monday on the video and on your Facebook, and there's only like two other people, so so nobody watches on Monday. But you still no, no, them. but that Monday show, that Monday show at four o'clock, the actually when I put it up on YouTube, gets incredible numbers. Really? Not yeah. While it's gets live, incredible numbers, but live yeah. doesn't doesn't get as many. Maybe it's the timing. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. Middle of the day for some people. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, that's it. Uh, thank you all for joining me tonight. Started out slow, and we got a lot of great people here. We got Josh, who's terrific, and Patrick and Kevin. Hopefully, I'll be talking to them at some secret time for a secret rendezvous. Uh, uh, thanks to Jeff, who hasn't really said a word all night. And his still mic, on mute. Uh, he's, he's still on mute. Anyway, <laughs> he's still on mute. Uh, anyway, uh, and thank you, Alan, and thank you. Uh, to uh, uh, our, our, our good friend uh, there he is. Uh, John Larkin. Oh, there, there's Jeff. Say hello, Jeff. Good night. Yeah. Good night. And uh, Brian, thank you for joining us uh, here. Yes. We, we appreciate it. Turned into a really nice group of people. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back, and then I'll be out of sync. Watch, folks. You'll see. I'm out of sync. Well, maybe I'm not. Hmm. That's amazing. Well. Okay. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> whatever. Anyway, let me just say goodbye to our people here and thank them so much for having joined us. And thank you for joining us as well. Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection right after this program. We'll see you again on Monday <coughs> with a pop-up show at 4 o'clock on Facebook. And then again on uh, Wednesday at, uh, at 10.30. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, everybody? Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.